It was 14th May, the year 2006. The air was heavy with sorrow as comrades, their faces edged with grief, gathered in this somber place. A campus hostel, once a hub of youthful camaraderie, had now become the backdrop for a heart-wrenching farewell. A friend was found dead in this very hostel. Here, beneath the grey, cloud-laden sky, they stood to bid farewell to their dear friend Jack. Jack, a promising soul, filled with dreams and aspirations, had met a tragic end. The weight of unspoken regrets hung in the air, shrouding the past in darkness. Alpha, his loyal friend, vowed to uncover the hidden truths, determined to understand the circumstances that had led to this tragic day. In the name of the Father, Alpha watched the as Jack's girlfriend, overcome with sorrow, May the Lord be with uncontrollably. You. She embodied the, the collective anguish that gripped their hearts. I have All dressed in fight. black, they paid their final respect race. to a life lost too and soon. In this graveside, Amidst the written. silent trees and the whispers of the wind, All they the honored the memory of Jack. Alpha embarked on a quest, From dust, seeking answers came. to the questions that haunted him. And to dust, Why we had their done. friend been taken from them? What secrets and hidden wrongs had pushed him to this irreversible decision? Yeah, the mystery yeah. remained, leaving them with the hope yeah. that one day they might find closure in the midst of their grief. It's been a week and Alpha had not seemed to come to terms with what had happened. How could you be with someone at the party one day, then the very next day he is no more, someone you loved and cherished? Questions lingered in his mind and he had to find answers. Sophie, you know things fall apart? It is an absolute masterpiece. It portrays Igbo culture and its tradition. It is incredibly authentic and too provoking. I can agree with you about the authenticity, but I can't help but find some of the character's actions as rather regressive. Okonko, for instance, his obsession with masculinity and his fear of being perceived as weak, that led him into making very self-destructive decisions. Okonko represents a struggle between the old ways and the changing world. He is, he, during the arrival of, absolute, of the British colonizers, he is devastated by the impact of the colonizers. Yes, but it also highla highlights the rigidity of some tradition. Most characters in that book, they seem trapped by customs that are rather harmful to their self-development and the well-being of them. Your debate is certainly intriguing, a depth to the testament of the novel. However, we will revisit this topic later in the course when we discuss Chimua Achebe's work more comprehensively. Uh, with me are your cut's results, and I must say, Jack, you did a very good job. You can hand this to the characters. Yes. One notable betrayal is that of the character Richard when he betrays his lover Kainene by getting romantically involved with Olana, her twin sister. This romantic betrayal, it causes a strain between the sister's relationship and also causes emotional trauma. It's always the betrayers who know their fellow betrayers. It doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic involvement. You know, even Judas used a kiss. I mean, an evil tool could easily be used as a form of betrayal. Ah. Ah. Alpha, are we analyzing the same book? Anyway, since the time is so much gone, let's meet in the next class. Alpha felt like he had solved the mystery of his friend's death. Why would your academic rival, who met him very good terms with, give you an apple and then the next day you are no more? How could Sophie be so heartless?
Hey, so you thought you were smart, huh? What do you mean? I just answered a question in class. You could have answered if you wanted to. Don't even try to play dumb. You know what I'm talking about. You know what killed Jack? What are you saying? Jack is gone and you should let him be. I don't know what you're talking about and you should stop bothering me. Hey, wait up. So you mean to tell me it's such a beautiful coincidence that your enemy offers you an apple and the next day you're no more? Oh, hey, <laughs> hey. What a coincidence. What do you mean, Alpha? How could you accuse me of such a thing? So you saw the part I gave Jack the apple, but you did not see me biting it before giving it to him? If you're so interested in finding out how Jack died, maybe you should check with the cards that you used to attend in Hostel Q, room A3, every day at 5 p.m. Alpha had to start from scratch once again. He had to think harder. The little hope he had had been crushed. He had to do something. Jack had to find justice. But again, one thing led to another. He remembered Sophie's words. Maybe you should check the hands that you used to attend. In hostel room, room 83, every day at 5 p.m. Could Jack be in a secret society that Alpha didn't know about? Why would he be in such in the first place? Alpha had lots of questions that needed answers. Or maybe Sophie was just trying to sell a new narrative to distract Alpha from the truth. Alpha was so determined. Nothing would sway him in any way whatsoever. Nothing. Babe, 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 you can't keep doing this to yourself. You barely eat. All you do is think. You know, Jack was a friend of us too. A friend of many. But life has to continue. Uh, babe, I can barely rest. I can barely have a, a clear mind. Jack had a whole life ahead of him, but it was cut short. Someone just decided that his life was not worth living. I mean, why? Well, maybe it was God's time. Maybe you're just stressing yourself over things that are not there. Maybe it's all in your head. You know, you'll get into curiosity with this. You'll get into trouble with this curiosity of yours. Okay, babe. I've had you. I'll try to be better. Well, since we have no classes tomorrow, <laughs> I'll be sleeping over. I know you miss me, right? Yeah, sure I do. I think uh, they'll be they'll be here within no time. Yeah, so don't worry. And uh, by the way, how are you how are you coping up with the situation? It has not been easy. I can't believe Jack is no more. I can't believe the life of my life is nowhere to be seen. I'm finding it difficult to cope up. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna get easier. Don't worry, with the time, it's gonna get easier. Sorry. Hey guys. Hey guys, Hi, it's confetti. It's confetti, just chilling. 
What have you all been up to? Well, it's been tough, guys. I think I myself have not come to terms with the issue yet, you know. But we need to try and move on. Guys, I know it's tough, but things are gonna go be get better. Yeah, sure. You sure. know, Jack wouldn't have uh, wanted to see us in this mode, you know. Mm -hmm. And Good. guys, I'll host a party at my place to mm -hmm. honor Jack and uh, to cheer up our mood a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, the weekend at my place. Yo, Lim. Yeah. 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 Guys, you're something, 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 you're me love you every time, no remote can change my mind. You me love you every time. Me no know how to red label. I just you me want to wine, take off, take off first. Then after we converse, I'll come in here, me a pervert. When you make your body drunk, you know, tears me off a burst. Me no carry girl feelings, but if you're not giving me my heart, you couldn't deal with my girl. It off a sin, but my credit me don't want, but the phone on my shirt. Me a mad of all your girl and him blind, but you're Man, this my body still is. What are you doing with that? Man, you boy, what are you doing? Hmm? Shenzi. Now, Jack must see you this. Sir? Eh? Guys. Why are you doing this to Jack? <laughs> You're lying. Who is even loyal? Who? Who? No one. I've said this party is over. Let me take you home. Alpha was not okay. Alpha needed closure. I've said in this cruel world. That's why we decided to talk a different dimension on how to sort out our issues. And closure is what he sought. He embarked on his quest for truth. I know what you are looking for. I know what you are up to. But one thing I'm not sure what led you into this room. But what I can assure you, the cause of his death won't be found in this room. How, how did, you, did you know Jack? How did he end up with you guys? We are just a support group of people battling mental health. Indeed, 
matters of the heart can unleash monsters we never knew we had in us even alpha himself couldn't believe a young well-spoken and well-behaved boy like him would one day fall under the category of a kidnapper and maybe a murderer who knows what his anger would lead him to do next to Sasha, a girl he spotted at the graveside the day he buried a part of him, the day he buried his best friend. <laughs> How long are you planning to keep me in here? You know you damn right. Who keeps a hostage in their room? You know when the police track me, you'll be arrested. I don't care. I'll keep you here for as long as you're not telling me the truth. What truth? Oh, my truth. I'm happy Jack died and I don't even give a fuck about how anyone feels about it. Hey, shut up! Another stupid word from you again. And I'll send you straight to where Jack is, so you can tell that to his face. <laughs> Apart from kidnapping, you also beat up women, huh? Hey, don't push me. Now, start talking. What happened to Jack? Jack was the love of my life. Surprised, huh? You don't know you are. I only saw you at the graveside, laughing like a moron while other people were mourning. How heartless. Now, speak. I knew. Not you. None of Jack's friends knew me. I loved Jack like I never loved before. Worst part, he made me fall in love with him even more. I loved that beast more than I ever loved myself. I would do anything for Jack. <laughs> I would kill for Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack. It was my world. He had some weird fetishes, but I was ready to risk it all for him. The pure girl I was, fresh and untouched, I gave myself to him. And he pandered that thing like a cal girl with first hand experience that he had gained from a brother. Funny thing, Jack never mentioned he loved me or something. But I kept giving myself to him like a, a stupid pig hung in the butchery waiting for the buyers. He pandered mercilessly like it was the last time he was gonna do it. I would cry in pain and nothing. I would scream, but he kept doing it until he satisfied all his, fetish his fetishes. I, I would bleed every time, but as long as Jack was happy, I would still do it. I got pregnant twice. Jack was for abortion, so we did it. I thought I was the only one. But then I started seeing bracelets and wristbands. I started singing as a madam, because of places that I go and I rap. I wasn't ready to lose him, so I had to confess my feelings for him. I didn't know that that was the beginning of miserable things in my life. Jack rejected me plainly. He said he enjoyed it with me minimal attachment. He didn't want any commitment. I lost everything. The world came climbing down at me. I lost myself. My innocence. I couldn't think straight. I fell into depression. I just wanted to die. I lost my fallopian tube because one of the pregnancies was an ectopic pregnancy. I had 
attempted suicide three times. Nothing. Hey, you see? You see why I'm happy that Jack is dead? I'm happy that Jack is dead. But sometimes, I wish, I, I wish I'm the one that did the killing. At this point, Alpha started questioning even his own existence. He couldn't believe what he had. Was there a cloned Jack or was he in a dream? Because that couldn't be the same Jack he knew. I have been away from my room since yesterday morning and I believe my roommates are looking for me. For your own good and time is so we don't raise alarm of any missing person. He couldn't believe it. He needed to hear Jack's side of the story. He needed to know the truth. He needed answers. And his quest would lead him to even darker secrets too heavy for a man's heart to bear. Alpha went to Jack's room that very night expecting to find something, anything that would confirm that what he had was not true but those were only wishes. What was about to be unveiled was unfathomable. Dear diary, I thought I was strong enough. I will never own a diary, but here I am. But when I realize diaries are not for the weak, they are for the strong. I have been strong since the early age of nine. In everything I did, I did. I had to prove that I could do it that I was strong, 
that I was man enough. The sad part was I was never man enough for my father, but I kept doing it. But I kept being strong, but not for a single day did I ever become a man in his own eyes. At an early age of 14, my drunk dad forced me onto a woman who was quite older than me, a mature lady, but a bit younger than my father. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to do it. I had to become the man my father wanted me to be. I became addicted to sex. I was young and I couldn't find a woman I could satisfy myself with. The closest I could get was my sister. I lured her and forced her on. I was every day of the year. Years passed and I kept doing it. As I grew older, I could now find women of my choice. But the problem was I wasn't emotionally addict, attached to them and I liked it that way. I went from woman to woman, regardless of age. My sister continued to fall victim of my selfish behavior. My father died. My father died not knowing what he turned me into. I knew that wasn't me. I knew I wasn't a monster. I had people. I committed wrongs against man and God. But it was the only way I could keep going. Nobody will understand me. Days went and I decided to call home one day. I received news that my sister was pregnant, <laughs> that she had been thrown out of the hometown because she was a decrease and brought shame to the family. They didn't realize who was the monster and she was innocent and I was the only source of shame in that home. I was responsible for the pregnancy. My sister had never been with any man, and I am sure things got worse. One fateful day, I was called to the telephone booth that there was a call for me. I picked the phone, and my mother was crying. I still remember the ways that my sister had died in the street with her unborn baby. My mother blamed herself, but I was the real culprit. I was the monster. I didn't think I deserved forgiveness. The guilt is killing me. I have sinned. I have wronged mankind. I don't deserve a chance in this world. All I have to do is leave the world for the humans, those with the heart and humanity. I don't deserve the world. I am sorry. Even though I know it won't change anything. Bye. Alpha's worst nightmare had been confirmed. How was one's human heart and brain supposed to handle all this? He had damaged his innocence in the quest for truth. He became a different man. Oh, by the way, my apologies, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Daphne, Daphne Saki, a fourth-year student at the Imarika University, once an alma mater for Alpha, Jacques, Laura, and all their friends. Seventeen years later, I find a book in the school archives, a book by Alpha Fundi. Yes, Alpha, Jacques' friend. Probably the only copy there is on this planet documenting what transpired at the Imarika University in the year 2006. Not many may know about this book. Maybe the story is too heavy to share, but at least we can share on what we are going through. Maybe it's a wake-up call or rather a sign that we need to start a serious mental health awareness campaign to stop such calamities from happening for people to lead healthier and happier lives, speak and be heard.
And I've got a lot I won't ever forget this unpleasant thought See, I can hold a grudge Longer than you I can hold a grudge Hold one for two I can hold a grudge Longer than you 